Welcome back, class art of the Roman world. I am Patrick Monin, and I will be presenting today on the column of Trajan. Not to be confused, of course, with the column of Marcus Aurelius, as I'm sure we've all done before. I know I have. Um, so the column of Trajan, this beautiful column. Um, construction on it began in 106 CE after... Trajan conquered uh, Dacia, which is modern-day Romania, in the Second Dacian War. So Trajan, who reigned from 98 to 117 CE, oversaw two campaigns in Dacia and Rome won both times. Um, the first one was from 101 to 102 CE, and the second one was from 105 to 106 CE. And then after the second one, when they... Uh, finally incorporated Dacia in as a uh, Roman uh, imperial province and took all of its natural resources. Um, they had um, all this money and they funded um, with the rich booty they got from the Second Dacian War um, the construction of the Trajan Column. Um, so the Trajan Column, which is located in the Trajan Forum on the north end of the Forum, um, was originally surrounded by libraries and the Basilica Ulpia, and it was the tallest structure in the Forum. So, the construction began in 106 CE after um, 100 days of celebration declared by Trajan because of their victorious efforts in Dacia. So, in this sense, it's kind of the permanent celebratory act that followed, you know, all the days of celebration, kind of the temporary celebratory acts of the time um and there's a, a quote by Cassius Dio that kind of gives an account of um the campaign of the Romans in Dacia and Trajan's um role in this and it says after spending some time in Rome he made a campaign against the Dacians for he took into account their past deeds and was grieved at the amount of money they were receiving annually, and he also observed their power and pride were increasing. So they had all these natural resources, and they were also seen as somewhat of a threat in the region. And so uh, the column is meant to kind of memorialize um, Trajan's efforts in the wars to kind of, you know, give a sense of, um, you know power and um sanctity almost to his um efforts and then also it kind of functions to immortalize him to some extent um almost give him like a godlike um you know vibe amongst the people so the column itself is broken down into three main pieces you have the base the bottom half and the top half so the base right here shows all kinds of Dacian shields and weaponry so it's kind of meant to show kind of the armor and you know weapons of the opponent and it shows them as a valorous opponent you know the, the Dacians um Trajan shows in the, the architects show um was not an opponent meant to be taken lightly they were a difficult opponent that Trajan had to overcome. It was not something that was easy, but something dumb because of the brilliance of both Trajan and the Roman army. So here we have their shields, their armor, their weaponry. And then above here, right here, it's kind of hard to see, but there is an oak wreath that symbolizes victory and the victory of the Romans. And so above this oak wreath, we have a continuous narrative that kind of spirals up sort of unfurls around the monument, or the column, one could say. That is a chronological account of the Dacian Wars. So one of the first scenes that we have on this unfurling is the Roman crossing of the Danube. See, we have over here the Roman army on um, a bridge of boats, and this man right here, this older man, is a personification of the Danube River. So the Romans are getting ready to cross the Danube into Dacian territory, and then on the other side, we see how that plays out. So, the Bridge of Boats was a big 
feet on um, one of the architects that was um believed to be responsible in a lot of ways for the designing of the Trajan Column, Apollodorus, uh, the Bridge of Boats was like one of his main things. So we have the Romans crossing the Danube into Dacian territory, led by Trajan, and um, once they get across, um, it shows the, you know, the havoc that the Romans wreak on um, the Dacians, and it also shows the Romanizing, so to speak, of the actual area. So it doesn't just show a bunch of battle scenes and, you know, the Romans conquering this and that. It also shows, you know, the Romans setting up camps, performing religious rituals, building structures. So it's the, the power of the Roman forces combined with um, the battles themselves that are very important. So Trajan not only wants to show the military prowess, but he also wants to show the superiority of the Roman civilization in comparison to, you know, the more humble Dacian civilization. And in this regard, the Dacians are shown as a very barbaric people to contrast. Not only are the Romans shown as great, but the Dacians are kind of shown as a very barbaric, very disorganized, a little more unkempt, whereas the Romans are very much aligned and very structured, very civilized. So they're bringing this civilization into the area, and then towards the end of this chronological count, we see the Dacian leader, Decabalus, actually commit suicide. Um, as the Roman forces, it becomes apparent that they're going to win, and Decabalus kind of takes it upon himself to to kill himself because of, um, of the impending Roman victory. So then after the, um, the bottom half of the continuous narrative, we see... On um, the top half shows the Second Dacian War, also in chronological order. Um, so we see all kinds of co um, cultural information here about um, the Dacian War. Um, on this half, we have let's see, some pictures of um, the Romans building structures, once again, like the point. Um, from the First Asian War, we have, you know, here are the Romans organized building structures um, while the Dacians are kind of, you know, clawing around, um, unable to achieve kind of this, this level of, you know, cultural um, brilliance. And then another major thing to note about the top half is so we have, you know, the Romanizing the defeats of the Dacians in, um, in the Second Dacian War. But then we also have up here a statue of St. Peter, which was originally a statue of Trajan. So um, Pope Sixtus V in 1588 um, see, you re replaced the statue of Trajan with a statue of Peter. But the statue of Trajan um, was very important to make note of because Trajan, in this sense, was overlooking the Trajan form. He was overlooking the expanse of the Roman Empire. Um, and so Trajan himself is very much ingrained in this column. In fact, the base of it actually serves as a burial place for Trajan when he dies in 117 CE, um, four years after the column itself is finished. So we see that. Um, so the unifying theme of it all is the Roman military campaign. That is something that is the main underlying theme, it's the account of the Dacian Wars, a glorified account of the Dacian Wars, and then combine that with the work of the Roman forces, you know, bringing civilization to the area, you know, kind of in contrast with the disorganized, barbaric nature nature of um, the Dacian people. Um... And the column also records a lot about the Dacians. It records their leaders, their land, um, what all of that looked like. It was very much an account in this sense in in the narrative. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't just like here's what the Romans did, you know, very Roman centric. It's it's what the Romans did in comparison and juxtaposition with what the Dacians did. So it, it displays all this. Um, you know, the way they were, what their leaders looked like, what their land looked like. Um, 
And then in this sense, it also glorified the Romans and their territory and showed the new territory that they had just um, conquered and their ability to bring civilization into barbarians, which is also kind of an underlying um, theme in this period of Roman history. You know, we've kind of moved on out of the Julio-Claudians now and into the five great emperors and, you know, constantly just expanding um, the territory of Rome. And so some analytical pieces um, of the column is, you know, it's it's kind of done in these in an unfurling way. It ri winds around in these registers, about 22 registers. And to get the full scope of the story, you have to walk all the way around the column. So you can't fully take in the story from any one vantage point. Um, you really have to kind of take it in from walking around, which kind of shows one really needs to get acquainted with the column to understand the story of um, of the column of the Dacian Wars and what it was trying to get across. And not only this, um, there's some hypotheses about, you know, the column when it was built, it was surrounded by the Basilica Olpian libraries. And so there's kind of a scroll-like nature to this column. So, you know, there's a chance that this could have, you know, the there could have been a scroll at the time um, from one of the libraries that resembled very much this type of um, this type of scene, you know, show, showing the Roman campaign in, in Dacia and bringing, um, you know, the Roman civilization, the power of the Roman forces um, is very much a possibility. Um, and then there are also many images of Trajan on the column that are very vertically aligned um, to make his presence very clear. So as you go up the column, if you find Trajan you know, in one place, if you look directly above, you know, there's many instances of that, um, in, it kind of shows his role in all of this. Um, and there are, you know, several bad battle scenes, um, with an emphasis on the surrender of the Dacian people, so, you know, very much wanting to get across the, um, the Romans' ability to kind of, you know, it's not like it just kind of fizzled out. The Romans forced this surrendering upon the Dacians. And at the end of the day, it, it kind of put a bow on everything for Trajan, and it glorified him in the in the realm, realm of public works. As he overlooks the forum, you know, he's kind of the, the eye in the sky, and he's protective of the people beneath him. And so the significance of this column, as far as the Roman art is concerned, is that it influences and kind of becomes a staple for future honorific um, monuments and columns and different celebratory type things. So as I showed earlier, um, the column of Marcus Aurelius is actually built after the column of Trajan. But you can see it very much resembles the column of Trajan. They both have an unfurling type nature, a good base, and it was believed... Pope Sixtus also replaced the, um, the statue on the top of the column of Marcus Aurelius, but it was believed that Marcus Aurelius, a statue of him, was originally on top of that column. So it very much influenced that, and it is also one of the longest continuous narratives in Roman art. So we know Roman art is big on narratives, and the column of Trajan being, you know, one of the longest continuous ones goes to show it's its force in Roman art, how, how much detail went into it. I mean, pretty much anything you can think of um, about the Dacian Wars and the kind of the symbolism of the victory wreath and then the chronological count, the Dacian surrendering, and then the Romanizing and going with the Roman forces. It, it really shows the progression of the Roman Empire at the time and um, Trajan's reign, and it, it glorifies Trajan's reign to the, the fullest possible extent in the center of the forum. And so it, it serves as that continuous piece of art, um, as well as being a staple and kind of an influencing honorific monument for future um, works of Roman art. Um, and that's, that's about it. Um, does anyone have any questions in the audience? All right. Well, I'll hand it back over. Please uh, thank you and join us next time. Awesome.